this is our last unit, so unit seven. Uh, we've got five new lessons in this unit, and we are building upon what we've done with quadratics in unit five and unit six. Um, so everything you're going to see in this unit is a quadratic equation, but it's embedded, hidden, presented, gifted to you uh, in a word problem or an application problem. So let's take a look. We're going to do, um, let me start at the very beginning here. We're going to do um, five different ways of looking at quadratics here. Uh, so let me erase a couple of these things. So we'll start out five different lessons. Each of these is a different way of thinking about quadratics. One is working with specific, specific or specified quadratic models. So I'm going to give you a quadratic equation and say this model's population or this model's the, the number of bikes that I'm making in a manufacturing shop. So I give you an equation and a model. You answer questions about it. The next is finding the model with a TI Inspire. So I give you raw data points. You use those raw data points to find the quadratic equation that will represent the model, just like we did with linear regression. Projectile motion, this has to do with a physics concept of an object goes up, it comes down, you look at the path, and I can tell things about it. And so here's the sort of the key is I'm never going to ask you in this section, go find the vertex of the parabola. I'm going to ask you, you know, what was the maximum height of the ball? And you know, well, that's the vertex, you know. Uh, or I'm going to ask you, when did the ball hit the ground? Well, that's when its height is equal to zero. That's the x-intercept. That's the kind of translation that needs to happen in your head uh, about the questions you're being asked. Quadratic modeling with borders. Um, when you see this, it's like you've got your favorite picture of your selfie. We need to put a border around it. Uh, that problem turns in nicely into a quadratic. And then similar to that is a problem with fencing. So you've got a house and you put a fence around it. Um, that can set up to be a quadratic model as well. So let's take a look at the first section. So today we talk about working with specific quadratic models, which means I give you the equation. So this one I say the population of this city is represented by this equation. P of t is 110 plus 4t plus 0.07t squared. What is t? T is the number of years after January 1st, 2015, okay? So what form is this equation in? This is a quadratic in standard form. So it should be very straightforward to answer what the y-intercept. The y-intercept is going to be the point 0, 1, 10. So it means at the y-intercept, t is equal to 0, and p is equal to 110. What does that mean in context of this problem? What does t equal 0 mean? That means the date 20, January 1, 2015. So in context of this problem, I know that the initial population on 1, 1, 15 is 110,000 people. So this is just an example of, in this section, I'm not going to ask the y-intercept. I'm going to ask you, what's the initial population of this city? And that turns out to be the y-intercept here, uh, because you set t equal to, uh, to 0. Um, what is the axis of symmetry? So we would find the axis of symmetry. t is equal to negative b over 2a. So that's going to be negative 4 over 2 times point. 07. So this is going to be, if I go to my calculator, um, negative 4 divided by 0.14. Um, so it's negative 4 divided by 0.28.57. So T equal negative 28.57. Now, what does that mean? Time is the years since January 1, 2015. So it means the axis of symmetry was almost 30 years before the year 2015. Okay. What do I do with that? So let's also think about this parabola. Does this parabola open up or down? We know this parabola opens upward. Okay. So I know this parabola has to open upward. You know, here's t equals zero right here. We're saying somewhere about 30 years ago, so I know it starts at 110, somewhere about 30 years ago, 
was where the vertex, you know, the axis of symmetry is going to be. So I know that what this parabola has to do is something like this. Okay, so this is modeling growth. Okay, so it's showing the growth of the population. So you should know that if the parabola opens upward, well, it's not always growth because if this parabola, if I looked at, if I was looking at this side of the parabola, that's showing a decline. And then the right side of the parabola is showing growth. But I can tell the way this model is that from zero to infinity, it's always going to be going up. So it is modeling a, a growth scenario. So I've got a better graph of it here. So I graph this for you um, using the graphing calculator. So you see that this is a parabola that opens upward. In the context of this problem, this is January 1st, 2015. And you can see about 30 years before that is where I hit my low point of population. Okay, so this might this might be a great model for population over here. Um, so I might just say that the, it only this model only works, you know, for the zero to 20. This may not have been an accurate model over to the left of the uh, of the y-axis uh, for population. So let's move on to answering a few questions about it. What is the projected population? of this city on January 1st, uh, 2022. So on January, so remember T is, is equal to the years after 1-1-15, okay? So it tells me on January 1st, 2022, we're talking about T is equal to seven, okay? So if I just go back to my formula, I know that P, of seven is going to be 110 plus four times seven plus 0 0.07, was that it, times seven squared. So I'll just put all of this into my calculator. So I get 110 plus four times seven plus 0 0.07 times t seven squared, which is 49. 141.43. So the population of Mathville is expected to be 141.43 thousand people on January 1st, 2022. Okay, so your answer is not just 141.43. This is quantitative data. You have a number and you have a unit, okay? The other thing I tell people, this is a word problem. The problem has words, your answer has words. So you really need to be able to state a sentence that answers the question, what is the projected population of this city? The population of this city is 141.43 thousand people on January 1, 2022. In what year will the population reach 180,000? Okay, so let's think about this. When does the population reach 180,000. So the y value is 180,000. I'm trying to say at what t value or x value will I get a population equal to the y value of 180. So graphically what this looks like is, you know, this is where 180 is, okay? So I'm saying what is the value of t, you know, right here, what is, what is the t value in time that gets me that population of 180,000. So that's graphically what it looks like. How many places does the parabola intersect that line? It intersects it twice, okay? This is gonna be a positive value for T right here. That's a negative value for T. So that's gonna be something like 70 years ago. Well, that's really not the one I'm interested in. I'm probably projecting when it's going to reach 180,000, when will it grow to that? So what I need to do at this point is I need to figure out how do I solve this equation? So this is my mathematical model. I set it equal to 180, okay? If I subtract 180 from both sides, I've got this new equation that I need to solve, okay? You are in luck because we just came out of a unit where we did solving equations like this. So we want to figure out how can we solve uh, equations like this, okay? So we've got choices. Uh, we can do this with the quadratic formula. And I think something you are going to love is if we do this with the, uh, the TI Inspire. So first of all, if I use the quadratic formula for this guy, um, A is equal to 
O7, B is equal to 4, C is equal to negative 70. So B squared minus 4AC is equal to 16 minus 4 times 0 0.07 times negative 70. So on my calculator, we'll go ahead and do that. So I get 16 um, minus 4 times 0 0.07. times, let me back up, negative 70. There we go. So it's B squared, that's 16 minus 4 times A times C, and all of that turns out to be 35.6. Okay, so B squared minus 4AC is 35.6. I know I'm going to get two real uh, irrational solutions. So T is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of 35.6 over 2A. So what are these numbers going to be? I'll just enter that in my calculator. So I'm going to get one value is 4 plus the square root of 35.6 over 0.14, and the other is 4 minus the square root, excuse me, negative 4, minus the square root of 35.6 over 0.14. So let's figure out what those two numbers are. So negative 4 plus the square root of 35.6. So negative 4 plus the square root of 35.6 divided by 0.14 equal 14.047. And then to figure out the negative value that corresponds with that, I can just recall that number. Um, sorry. Recall that expression. Uh, let's go back. recall that same expression instead of typing it in again and then instead of making that a plus make it a minus and what do we get negative 71.189 so what does this tell me I got two numbers it tells me that I will reach 180,000 you know 14 years from now or negative 71 years ago so the one that makes sense is this one right here okay so in the context of this problem, I know that in 14.047 years, the population will reach 180,000, okay? Now, what if the question had been, in what year do I reach that, okay? So in what year is that, okay? So if I started out in the year 2015, so I started out in the year 2015, if I add 14.047, that gives me 20, uh, 29.047. What year is that? That means I'm partially into the year 2029. Okay, so it happens in the year 2029. Okay, if that had been 2029.8, you don't round it up to the year 2030. That's still in the year 2029, it's just later in the year. Okay, so that's one way, which I think you're going to want to punt in a hurry on that. I think what you're going to want to do is to use your calculator to solve this. Okay, so let's just go back. I'm going to take this same equation. Okay, so remember I had this equation, okay, that was set equal to zero. If you, got a if you have an equation that is set equal to zero, you can use your calculator to solve this. Okay, so the way I'm going to do that is just go to menu algebra and I go to polynomial tools complex roots of a polynomial okay C poly roots is that equation I like to pick the, the complex one because if this answer has complex roots it's telling me there aren't real solutions I like to know that so all I have to do is enter um, 
that equation that is set equal to zero. So that was what, 0 0.07, and I think our variable here was t uh, squared. So 0 0.07 t squared, and then plus 4t, plus 4t, minus 70, okay? So that is the equation. I'm looking for the roots. Set it equal to zero. You have to tell this thing that you're solving, so comma t, it says solve this, a solve this equation for t for the variable t. And then you hit an enter, and it gives you back those same numbers we got from the quadratic formula. So you want to be very comfortable using your calculator uh, in this section because it saves you a lot of time and arithmetic mistakes. Okay. So that was one way. There is another way to solve this graphically. Um, and I want to see it because this is something that's going to come up in your in your later classes. Um, what I can do to solve this is if I can look and say, okay, there's a graphical solution to this problem. Okay, so I could graph this parabola, come up with a, a, a graphical solution. So the way I'm going to do this, first thing is just to um, <clears throat> uh, just to uh, to graph the uh, graph the equation. So let's go back to our uh, calculator. Let's create a new graph page, which I don't think we've done so far in this. So I want to graph. Now here on your graphs, everything is in terms of x. You can't really graph things in terms of the variable t. So I need to graph 0 0.07, and that is x squared. So 0 0.07 x squared, and my original. So I'm going back to graph. Let me just check it real quick. I'm graphing that original equation. Yeah, 0 0.07 x squared plus 4x, so 0 0.07 x squared plus 4x. Plus 110, okay? Now, I don't see this anywhere on my graph, so I have to use some, some logic here. Okay, why am I not seeing that? This calculator doesn't automatically um, create the window for you. So I go to window zoom, I go to window settings, okay? So X is my variable for time, okay? I'm really, you know, time starts at zero. Um, let's let it go up to, you know, um, maybe 50 years, okay? Maybe going up to 50 years. I know that my Y value, you know, where does my Y value start? We already saw that in this problem. This Y value starts at 110. So we'll say from 110, and let's just pick another number, just say maybe 200, and see if we get a graph here. Okay, I do see a graph at that point, okay? So I see the graph of this parabola, and then let's just hit a tab. I'm interested in when this population each reaches 180, okay? So I'm interested in where these two things are intersecting, and so what I would do at this point is menu, and I would do analyze graph, look for the intersection. And then what you'd have to do is click to the left of this point, click to the right of that point, and it tells you uh, about 14180 is the intersection here. So in that case, it tells me that, okay, it's about 14 years uh, from the original when I get that uh, uh, particular value. So there is the instruction for doing that. I'm thinking a lot of people are going to skip on that because it's a little bit cumbersome um, to do this little graphical thing. But I wanted to introduce it because it's something that you're going to need a skill uh, to do in later math classes. So I think most people are going to gravitate toward using that command, C poly roots, uh, for solving these, uh, these equations. So let's take a look at another example here. Consider this polynomial that represents yearly income or loss from a real estate investment. After what year does the income begin to decline? Okay, so this is a parabola. So A is equal to negative 0.1, B is equal to 2, and C is equal to 0. Okay, what is the y intercept here? The y intercept here is 0, 0. Okay, so that means, what does it mean in context of this problem? So initially, that means when time is equal to 0, um, the, um, what is it, our um, income, initially the income is what? Zero. 
So that means you're about to make an investment. Right before you make that investment, you have made no money. Okay, so the initial the initial income from this investment is zero dollars. Okay, that makes uh, makes sense. So that means I'm starting out, you know, with zero dollars uh, as my um, as my income. So roughly, what is happening here? So if I look at this, is a parabola that's doing what? Uh, this parabola is opening downward. Okay. So what's happening here is what this parabola has to do, it's going to have to do something like this, okay? So it means that the way this model is, yes, I'm going to start by making money. You know, money's going to be I'm making money, but then I'm going to reach a point where I've reached my maximum, and then it's going to start going down, okay? So that's really what is happening here. So then let's look and see what they asked me. They asked me at what? After what year does the income begin to decline? Okay, so if you look at the rough sketch here, my income is increasing. I reach a point after which now my income starts to decline. So here I've got an increase. Over here I have a decline. It would be wonderful if there was a way to find what that point is. What that point is the vertex. So that's what I'm saying in this particular unit. I'm not asking for the vertex. I'm saying where does the income start to decline? That's a fancy way of saying find the vertex. But what do they ask for? I ask for um, what year does the income be begin to decline? So which variable is that going to be? You know, this is T in years, and this is the amount of money that I make over here. So I'm asking for the T value, the, the first coordinate, the X coordinate of the vertex. So really this problem just is basically saying find the vertex. Okay, that's all that's really being asked in this particular case. So I know that T, so remember what I had, A was equal to what? Negative 0.1, B was equal to two. So T is going to be negative B over two A. So that's negative two over two times point, uh, negative 0.1, okay? So this is going to be a positive number. So it's just going to be one over 0.1, okay? So you can do that on your calculator, or it's 1 over 1 tenth, which is 10. So what does that tell me? So go back to the context of the problem. Do I have that here? No, it's the next problem. So in the context of this problem, I can see that when t is equal to 10, that means in 10 years, the income is maximized. So it takes 10 years in order to maximize this income. What is the maximum income? Okay, how would I find that? What is the maximum income? So if the question had been what is the maximum income, I know it happens in 10 years. That means I know the X value. How would I find the Y value? You would plug that back in. So that would be just plugging back into the equation. So you would plug in the equation, you know, I of 10 is equal to negative 0.1 times 10 squared plus 2 times 10. Okay. And so that becomes what this is 100, so 10% of 100 is 10, so this is minus 10 plus 20, which is 10. So that tells me in 10 years, I believe the population, excuse me, the maximum income would be what? This was measured in yearly income, so I assume I didn't tell you, but I assume it's measured in, hopefully it's measured in thousands of dollars or something bigger than dollars, okay? So again, this is a poorly formed question if I were asking you that, but that's the, the way you would find the Y value is just plugging, uh, plugging back in. Okay. Very similar problem here. Um, number of mosquitoes in millions giving according to this equation, what is the maximum number of mosquitoes? I know that the Y intercept, I know the Y intercept is zero, zero. This is a parabola that opens downward. So, I'm going to see something going on like this. What rainfall, so x 
you know, x is my rainfall, m is the number of mosquitoes in millions, okay? So what rainfall produces the maximum? Well, they're asking me in fancy terms to go find the vertex, okay? So the vertex is going to be x equal negative b over 2a, so that's negative 19 over 2 times 1, so this is going to be um, um, uh, 2 times negative 1, sorry, this is going to be 9.2, um, so it tells me what rainfall, so it tells me that the rainfall is in inches, so at 9.2 inches, that's when I reach my maximum mosquito population, okay? What is the maximum number of mosquitoes? That's basically saying find the y value. You know the x value, it's just a matter of plugging that in. So m of 9.2 is equal to 19 times 9.2 minus 9.2 squared. So I'll go to my calculator for that. So go back to a calculator page. So it's, um, in this case, what were the numbers? 19 times 9.2. So 19 times 9.2 minus 9.2 squared. Um, back up there. Minus 9.2 squared equal 90.16. So it tells me that the max population is 90, what was that number? 90.16. So 90.16 million mosquitoes. Okay. So in 9.2 years, excuse me, 9.2 inches, sorry, is the rain value that gives me the maximum population. The maximum population is 90.16 because what that means is this vertex is the point 9.2 90.16 so all I did was find the vertex of a parabola put some words around it to give me the context of what's uh, what's going on okay to finish up this particular problem we were on the last one in this section. Let's look at this particular model. So I've got a quadratic, and I'm modeling prize money in dollars. And then T is represented as the years after 1970. So prize money winning a golf championship. How much did the winner in 1970 win? So in 1970, T is equal to zero. If I plug in a zero into this original equation, I get 200,000. So that's the initial winning. So 2001 in 1970. In parabola speak, that's the y-intercept. Set x or the t-value equal to zero. How much did the 1980 winner, that's 10 years after 1970, so t is equal to 10. So p of 10 is equal to 28. 75 times 10 squared plus 200,000. So this is 287500 plus 200. And so this turns out to be uh, 487500. So it tells me that these were the winnings in 1980, okay? So if I look at it, this is a parabola that is opening opening upward, okay? So it's if it starts at 0, 0, um, uh, it should be just modeling growth in this particular case. Um, so if what year did the prize money first reach 1.3 million? So I'm saying, let's look at this model. I'm saying, when does the prize money equal 1350? Okay. When does that happen? Okay. 
So what I need to do is to say that set this equal so two eight seven five t squared plus two hundred thousand is equal to one point three five million. And so here I got a choice. Okay, I can do some arithmetic, I could do not completing the square, but taking the square roots. You can just go to your calculator and do very little arithmetic to get this thing solved. So the calculator likes to solve when this thing is equal to zero. So 2, 8, 7, 5, t squared plus 200,000 minus 1.35 million. Okay, if I put that in the calculator, that will solve it for me. So let's go to the calculator. So that is menu algebra polynomial complex roots. So that is 2875 t squared plus 200,000 okay, minus one three five zero 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 zero, so one point three five million, and then you have a comma t. So solve this equation for t, and you get t is equal to negative twenty and positive twenty. So that means that this happened. So here it was nineteen seventy. Okay. So. My model is years since 1970. So when I come up with t equal negative 20 and positive 20, that's telling me 1950 and 1990. My model is not talking about what happened in the past. It's talking about years since 1970. So it's going to hit 1.3 million 20 years from 1970. So in 20 years, but what did they ask in the original problem? They ask, uh, sorry in this particular question during what year so 20 years since 1970 that means in the year 1990 the prize reaches 1.35 million okay do I think this is a realistic model? Why or why not? It's hard to say, you know, it's probably not going to work forever, but this is the model of a parabola that just keeps on shooting upward, okay? So if I believe that the prize money is always going to be going up, then it's realistic, but, you know, it's probably only realistic, it's probably only realistic you know, for the short term, okay? Because it's hard. There's so many variables. It's hard to know how this might play out in the in the long term. So sort of an open-ended question there. So anyway, that is it. That's the end of this unit. Just using quadratics when I give you a model and embedded in a word problem and asking questions about that.